Hey, my friend. I got that kid I was talking to you about here. I'm gonna put him on the phone and let you talk to him, okay? Hello? Is that Frank? Yes. Hiya, Frank. This is Jimmy Hoffa. He's a man who gave us good fellas and the departed. Martin Scorsese is back with his latest crime saga. It is called The Irishman, and you just saw the film, part of it there, which runs three and a half hours. Yes, that's exactly what I said. It has some big Hollywood names, though. It is being released in select Canadian cities starting today. But here's another option. I mean, you can check it out later this month on Netflix. So you just chill, you wait, or do you head for the big screen? Or do you watch it at home? Hmm, flip a coin. Eli Glasner is here. He can flip that coin for us. Where do we start? Classic Scorsese shot. We're in a hallway, the camera's pushing down. We go around the corner, we hear 1950s pop songs on the soundtrack, but it's present day, sort of, and that's where we see Frank, uh, Robert De Niro as Frank, but here he's in a wheelchair, he's weakened, he's withered. Then we flash back, we see this brute in his prime, Frank Sheeran, he fought in the war. He's a father, he's a truck driver in Philly, working for the Teamsters, looking to get ahead, looking to do deals for those fancy guys in their nice suits in the restaurant so stuff starts falling off Frank's truck. Frank starts getting in some trouble. So here's a Teamster lawyer played by Ray Romano seeing if Frank knows the game. Does Frank know what to say? Let's take a look. Do you have a show up late? No. Do you have any moving violations? No. Do you drink on the job? No. Do you ever hit anybody? On a job? Yeah. I don't think so. All right, then. We don't have nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. Frank knows the score, and so he starts rising to the ranks, and that's where he meets, yes, Joe Pesci, back working with Scorsese. Pesci has never been better. This little diminutive guy, but he is kind of a giant in this world. He is the head of the Buffalino crime family. He sees this guy, Frank. Frank, who speaks a little Italian because of the war. They make a connection. They break bread, and he gives him some opportunities. He sets him up to talk to the big man, Jimmy Hoffa on the phone, played by Al Pacino. Take a look. I heard you paint houses. Yes, yes, sir, I, I do, I do. And I, uh, I also do my own carpentry. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. I understand you're a brother of mine. Yes, sir, local 107, since 1947. Yeah, you know, uh, our friend speaks very highly of you. Well, thank you. He's not an easy man to please. Now, Frank is a powerful guy. He can be an angry guy, but you hear that deference there. You hear that humility because they know when to pay respect. And that phrase, paint houses, mm -hmm. what they're talking about is the spray of, well, blood on the walls when oh. Frank pays a visit. Frank is a hitman. And right, Frank right. is I got that, but I thought, where did the, the house ranks. painting come in? That's, yeah. it's not a, you don't want this house painter no. to come over. Okay. It all sounds like familiar territory for Martin Scorsese in particular, because, uh, I mean, the, the Departed, is, as sure, we mentioned yeah, earlier. But what separates it, if anything, from his other movies? It's that scope, it's that ambition in storytelling. I mean, this is a movie, as you said, that is three and a half hours long and takes place over half a century. So we start mm -hmm. in the 50s, we end in the 2000s, so you have that time to see these relationships grow, how you gain that that trust and sometimes how it actually fractures. Now the only downside of that is how do you show a young Robert De Niro when he is now 76? They do that digital makeup thing, that de-aging that's becoming more yep. popular and when he is at his youngest, it's kind of waxy. It's not as convincing. Luckily, as they get older, those relationships get more interesting and we're not distracted by that effect. And then, now it's the 1960s. Now Hoffa's dealing with the Kennedys mm -hmm. and new crime families. Let's take a look at that. We're going at war with these people. War. Things have gotten out of hand with our friend. You gotta sit down, everybody says so. I'm not sitting down, I can't do it. It's what it is. What it is. I know things they don't know I know. And so what happens is that both Russell and Hoffa are ascending, but something is starting to kind of cleave in between them. And that moment there where Pesci's character says it is what it is, like mm. I love the language. And these words are so simple, but they have so much gravity. It is what it is means so, it is not good. And so right. that's when he's saying, what do we do about Hoffa? It is what it is. You may as well start chipping out the tombstone. Right. Like that is 
something. And that's the kind of connection that these characters have. It's playing in some select theaters yeah. across Canada. That is what it is yeah. right there. But then for Netflix subscribers, you can wait three weeks, you know, click play sure. and watch it uh, in bed with your popcorn. Here's the thing. I had the luxury to see it in the theater. And not only is it just beautiful to see Scorsese's amazing, like, camera movements and the music and the editing and the lines on De Niro's face grow mm -hmm. as he gets older, but the last half hour of this film, it becomes something different. It's not a crime story. It's the director of The Last Temptation of Christ and Silence, a former altar boy, forcing these glamorous gangsters to atone. This is a man of violence looking into the abyss and then trying to make amends. And I don't think I would feel that much power if I hadn't been trapped in that dark box mm -hmm. and spent those three hours with Pesci and De Niro and hearing the talk and the promises and the negotiations, that's what this is. That's what makes it remarkable, the scope of this storytelling. And the only way I can fault it is that kind of digital effects. But other than that, this is a cinematic masterpiece. But the irony is only Netflix would pay for it. And so, yeah, most Canadians will watch this on the couch Maybe even their phones, but hopefully not. Hopefully Four and not. a half stars out of five. Wow. That makes me rethink. Thank you, Eli. You're welcome.